What's up, what's up, 49er fans, red and gold fans, 49er diehards, it's the Niner Nut, and today we're going to be talking about one of, well, no, not one of, in my opinion, the greatest comeback in NFL history, the greatest comeback there ever was, uh, which I'm talking about is the 2002 playoff game against the New York Giants. And I had kind of uh, glossed over this a little bit in my episode about the great Jeff Garcia. And I just felt that, you know, after I did that episode, I had gone back and rewatched a lot of that game. Um, It's been a little bit since I've seen it. And to me, it's probably one of the most underrated and greatest comebacks of NFL history. And it never gets its due. And I have a lot of friends that are New York Giants fans, unfortunately. I had posted the video, the ending video, um, on my Facebook page, and they got so I, typical New York Giant fans, you know, not all, but you know, little little disgruntled, little sour, salty about it. They get such babyish over things. Can't admit the fact that your team had one of the greatest chokes of all time in twenty and two thousand two. So I felt it was just such an important topic for me because I, I, again, I, I still stand by it's the greatest comeback in football history. And therefore, um, I wanted to just do an episode about it because it, to me, it was such a special time and such a special team that I think gets looked over a lot. Obviously, not so much by 49er fans, but more um, by, you know, just everybody in general, man. Um, And therefore, you know. I, again, if you go back and watch that game, you, you you can't help but put that right at the top. And I know there's a lot of other games. It's a it's a it's a subjective uh, topic, okay. But go and watch that. You know, there's the Monday Night Miracle with the uh, the Jets and the Dolphins, obviously. Uh, there's the Atlanta Fal- uh, the Patriots coming back from the deficit they were down against the Patriots. Obviously, the 1992 Bills Oilers game, they had to overcome a 35 to three deficit. Though 100, those 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 should be in there. But this to me is the greatest. Okay, is is the greatest comeback in NFL history. So, without uh, talking about it. Other things, let's get right into it. So, uh, as you know, we already know, they were 10 and 6 that year, first in the NFC West division under the great head coach Steve Mariucci. And of course, they were coming off a year in which they were 12 and 4. Okay, I uh, had lost that wild card game to the Packers 25 to 15. And this was a new regime for the Niners. You know, uh, Steve Young had retired, obviously, uh, after the unfortunate concussions the great Jeff Garcia was now the head uh was now the the quarterback and um they enjoyed a lot of um a lot of positives with this team this year okay I was actually at opening day which was on a Thursday night against the New York Giants believe it or not you want to laugh Bon Jovi had done the uh Halftime song, uh, It's My Life, I think it was he was doing. So I went there all decked out my nine of gear. I had my Steve Young jersey on. I had a sourdough Sam doll hanging from my neck from a chain. And I was ragging the ever-loving shit out of every Giant fan there. That was the game in which, if you remember, they won 16-13. to Jose Cortez kicked the winning field goal. It was a really, really tight one. Really good game. But... Uh, yeah, they went 4-1 and one in their first five weeks, okay? Um, and then by week 10, they were 7-2. and two. Obviously, looking really well. They dropped two in a row, one to the Chargers, one to the Eagles. They go 7-4. and four. They win two more. They drop a game in Green Bay. Um, and they finished the season 10-6, and six. okay? Um, and they draw the New York Giants. In the playoffs, which you all 49er fans know that there are many teams that we have a special history with. Well, the Giants are one of them. 
the New York Giants, the Dallas Cowboys, the Green Bay Packers. I mean, the list goes 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 deep. But this was going to be a uh, a very interesting one at best. Now, just just kind of looking back uh, on the season before that playoff game, you know, Jeff Garcia makes the Pro Bowl. Okay, um, some 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 very solid numbers. Tim Rattay is the backup. Uh, the great Garrison Hurst is, you know, uh, was teamed with Kevin Baller. They had a very nice one, two combination that year. Obviously the great Fred Beasley blocking at fullback. Uh, and then of course, Terrell Owens, Ty Streets, uh, JJ Stokes, Eric Johnson at receiver, Cedric Wilson, another guy from the past. So this was a, a, a more than solid team. And Ty Street, 72 catches, 756 yards, five five touchdowns. Had a great year that year, man. Great year. Him and Terrell made a really nice one-two combination. Eric Johnson, okay, um, would go on to be a, 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 a very good player until those darn injuries had uh, cost him so much. But again, this was a darn good team, man. Uh, Jose Cortez was the kicker for the most part until he was injured. Jeff Chandler took over. And on the defensive side of the ball, they had great players, man. Uh, Derek Smith led the team in tackles with 113. Julian Peterson was second with 96. Jason Webster, the great Tony Parrish, led the team with seven interceptions and 204 yards. He was an absolute lights-out type of safety. An athlete for that matter. Jeff Olberch was on that team. 70 tackles. Ahmad Plummer. Andre Carter led the team with 12 and a half sacks. Chikey O'Keefe, six. Dana Stubblefield and Bryant Young, of course. Ah, uh, so this was a, a, a very, very solid team. Okay, and I think that once again, in these last two seasons, in 2002, 2001, they shocked the, the living hell out of the NFL. I don't think anyone picked them to finish the way they finished, Not, especially in 2001 when they were 12 and 4. Nobody picked that. Okay. I remember the experts didn't have a clue. So, that being said, in the wild card round, they draw the Giants. And. Coming into uh, that season, you know, uh, well, back it up a little. The Giants were 10-6 and six under the great late Jim Fassel. Excellent head coach. Very good head coach. Very unfortunate that he passed. Offensive coordinator was Sean Payton. Defensive coordinator was Johnny Lynn. So a lot of great talent all over the place there. Okay. Uh, at this time... Kerry Collins was the quarterback. He enjoyed a, a decent season, over 4,000 yards, only 19 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. The uh, Jesse Palmer, the dude from uh, the reality TV, was The Bachelor, was the backup. And on the ground was the great Tiki Barber, 11 touchdowns that year, over 1,300 yards. Rod Dane, Ron Dane, rather. Uh, let's see who else was on this team. Amani Toomer. Jeremy Shockey, Ike Hilliard, Dan Campbell. Okay. Um, interestingly enough. And then, of course, there was, let's see who else. On the defensive side of the ball, Michael Barrow, really good linebacker. Sean Williams, Brandon Short. The great Michael Strahan led the team with 11 sacks. There's a shock. I'm being sarcastic. Jason Seahorn. Um, so, again, good team, man. Really good team. Finished 10-6 and six that year. And uh, we meet them at the stick, which would go on to be what a game, man. What a drainer. So, you know, it starts off uh, that 76-yard touchdown pass from Jeff Garcia to Terrell Owens. Niners go ahead 7-0. The Giants quickly answered with a 12-yard touchdown pass to Amani Tuma from Kerry Collins, tied 7-7. 
Jeremy Shockey catches. He had a monster game that game. Two-yard pass from Kerry Collins. They're up 14-7. Niners tie it with a Kevin Barlow one-yard run. It's 14 all. And again, for that point, you figured this is going to be a typical Giant 49, a really tight game like we've seen so many times from these two teams. Then the Giants start to pull away. Amani Toomer catches not one but two touchdown passes from Kerry Collins toward the end of the first half, making it 28-14. to Third quarter starts. Tiki Barber runs for a six-yard touchdown. It's 35-14. to And Matt Bryant, who was the kicker for the Giants at the time, kicks a 21-yard field goal. It's 38-14. to If you were a Niner fan, you figured, okay, you know, not today. You're down, uh, you know, uh, 24 points. But like we know, nothing is ever over till it's over. From there. Jeff Garcia engineers the greatest comeback in 49 history, in my opinion. Throws a 26-yard touchdown pass to Terrell Owens with the two-point conversion, making it 38-22. Garcia makes that great 14-yard run for a touchdown. He, that's where that famous celebration came when he got low with the ball in his left hand. Famous picture of that. Loved that celebration. It was so simplistic but so perfect. 38-30, two-yard uh, with the, with the uh, two-point conversion included. Jeff Chandler makes it 38-33 with the field goal. And then uh, to cap it off, Ty Streets catches a 13-yard touchdown pass from Jeff Garcia. The two-point conversion failed. And as everybody knows, the great choke happened then. The Niners, uh, the Giants drive down the field. Matt Bryant, the snap comes out from Trey Junkin. It is a bad snap. He never gets it off. Bryant rushes out to his right, tries to throw the ball to Rich Subert. Uh, they call pass interference, of course, but there was also an illegal man downfield, so the penalty is offset, and the game ends. If you were watching that game like I was, you had a heart attack maybe six times during that game. Holy Jesus. Wow. Was that a game? Now, just looking back at the stats on that one, it was, uh, yards galore, man. Okay, um... Both teams, interestingly enough, had 446 yards apiece. That's very interesting. Okay, Collins, 342 yards, four touchdowns, and a pick. Probably one of the best games I've ever seen Kerry Collins have in his career. Tiki Barber ran for 115 yards. Uh, Amani Tuma, eight catches, 136, and three touchdowns. Shockey, seven catches, 68 yards, and a touchdown. So... Ball was spread around very nicely on the Giants side of the ball. Jeff Garcia throws for 331, 27 of 44, three touchdowns, one pick. He also runs seven times for 60 yards and a touchdown. Terrell Owens goes off, nine catches, 177 yards, two touchdowns. Giants did not have an answer for him, okay, whatsoever. Garrison Hurst, six carries, 15 yards. Barlow, four carries, 12 yards. Yeah, the Giant defense was able to uh, stop our run game that day. Gave us a lot of trouble. Eric Johnson, eight catches, 78 yards. Ty Streets, five catches, 58, and a touchdown. And uh, on that defensive side of the ball, one of the more interesting stats is that we held the Giants to no sacks says a lot on our defensive side of the ball we got a sack a piece one from julian peterson one from the great john engelberger an interception from julian peterson as well Derek smith led the way with 10 tackles julian peterson had nine mike rump had eight bronson parish and plumber seven apiece so did you know listen This was, in my opinion, the greatest comeback ever. You're down 24 points late in the third quarter, man. All right? I mean, I I, I would think that a lot of people would have thought the same thing. I mean, think about it. They ran off 25 points in a quarter and a little more. That's amazing. I implore people who have not seen that game, who who do not remember that game, go back to that YouTube video and watch it. They have the whole darn game there. You can watch it from start to finish. It is an absolute fascinating game. 
for so many different reasons too. You 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 you'll see how good Jeff Garcia was, as I said before in my last podcast. You know, he, he was just so cerebral in that game, scrambling out of the pocket, feeling the pressure, throwing that bullet pass, being gutsy, not sliding, taking the hits as he ran. Eric Johnson had a had a great game. You know, he was so valuable, moved really well for a tight end too. Terrell Owens, you couldn't you couldn't guard him. Impossible. Then go back and and and, and look at that defense. They were a threat, man. You know, Engelberger, uh, Julian Peterson, Bryant Young, Tony Parrish. You know, again, I don't think that comeback gets its due. Maybe perhaps from we 49er fans, but not from as a whole. Now, you want to laugh. I did, I did find it on some of the greatest comebacks of all time, which I was happy to see that it's up there with that. I think it's the best one. And I think it's the best one because nobody would have predicted that happening, especially from from that team. It was 10 and 6 that year, which is not a bad record at all. But I think, again, they had so many players on that roster that was so underrated and so valuable that when you go back and think about it, you know, it, it pops out of your head. I mean, all the guys I just mentioned are, are stars, man. You know, the great Garrison Hurst. Okay. Um, so many other guys on that team, man. It, it, it's 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 crazy. Crazy to think about sometimes. And again, maybe, you know, at first I used to think, well, it's just because maybe you feel that way because, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're a 49er fan and, and obviously it holds a special place in your heart because, you know, you were, you were, You've been a fan for so long. I don't think so. I think, yeah, that's part of it. But at the same time, and you, you got to call it like it is when you when you see it. That that offensive line, right? The great Derek Deese on the left tackle. Okay, uh, Eric Heitman was a rookie that year. Oh, one of my favorites, Jeremy Newberry. There was a guy. Tough dude. Tough dude. Okay, tough, tough dude. They don't make them like Jeremy Newberry no more. Ron Stone and Scott Gregg, two ex-Giants, which is kind of funny. And then again, just quickly glossing over that defense, Andre Carter and Chaiky O'Keefe are defensive ends. Look at this combination, Stubblefield and Young in the middle, Peterson, Smith, and Olberch as the linebackers, Plummer, Webster, Parrish, and Ronnie Hurd. Those four in the defensive backfield, Combined for 13 picks that year. This is a great team, man. Great team. Underrated team. Greg Knapp's the OC. DC is Jim Mora. On that coaching staff is Dan Quinn, Richard Smith, Jason Tarver, Ted Toner. This is when they started calling the stick the recom, which I never really dug. It's it's the stick. Then it was Monster Park, whatever that came before, whatever the case may be. And this is under GM uh, Terry Donahue. What a team. What a team. Mariucci was a really good head coach, man. Another guy I don't think gets his due. But if you're a Niner fan, Niner nut like we are, you know that this is cemented in history, man. That's where it stays. So again, my opinion, the greatest comeback in NFL history. And and me saying it, telling you about it, and you haven't seen it, I'm not doing you any justice. You have to watch it for yourself, man. Put that put that on the big screen. You know, if you got that smart TV and you can put YouTube up on the big screen, do that for yourself, man. Get it up there and just kind of. If you saw the game, put yourself back in that time. And if you never saw that game, make it like it's 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 fresh. Make it like it's actually happening now. And let me tell you, man, as a fan, holy shit, was that stressful. But again, it was well worth the ride. Oh, I love that team, man. I love those guys. 
I love those guys. That's probably one of my favorite nine of teams of all times, man. I love the talent that they had on that team. There were so many integral guys on both sides of the ball that just fit, man. So many great 49ers on that team. So many great names. So much great talent. Again, like when you're like us, right? When you're nine or nuts, when you're into it, this is this is what you what you what comes to mind, man. I'll be in a conversation with friends sometimes we're talking football. I'll bring up so many of these names. You know, who? I'm like, what planet are you on, dude? I'm talking legit. Had to make an episode dedicated to this. It wouldn't be right. Especially for all those 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 giant fans, man. Yeah, you. I'm sorry. Great organization, but you're part of one of the greatest chokes of all time. You know, I don't give a shit what you want to say about the last play, penalty, this, that, the other thing. I don't want to hear it. History is what it is. Okay, you were up 38-14 going into the fourth quarter. Well, toward the end of the third quarter, you choked. Most teams put that away. You did not choked so just another notch on the our niner belts against those pesky giants right all righty that cuts it for this episode i will be coming at you guys with some more content real soon keep paying attention to the reports out there although you know take things with a grain of salt especially from all these different reports of course there are some very valuable reporters and journalists out there doing their job and getting the most up to the date news on the 49ers whether it's Jimmy G or all the other free agent moves or the draft coming just keep your eye on things man it's going to get interesting i think and uh you know it it's it's just something you have to kind of take day by day you know, don't take one story over the other to be so true. Sometimes a lot of it is just rumors or you don't know where it's coming from. But just keep your eye on it, man. It's getting interesting. And uh, all we can do is hope for the best. That's it. I think this team is headed in the right direction as always coming off of last year. So we'll be all right. Nine or Nut is out. <laughs>